three words. Let's friggin' go. Find out why on tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets. You're locked on the Hockey Jets, your daily podcast on the Winnipeg Jets. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Afternoon, friends, and welcome to today's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Harrison Lee, an avid Winnipeg Jets fan and an online blogger. You can follow me on Twitter at HLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. Thanks for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on all of your favorite podcasting platforms and YouTube. Doing so, of course, is always free of charge and ensures you never miss another episode. Most of all, though, we just love and appreciate your support. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more because right now, new customers can get $100 and $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on right now to get started. Now, like I said, uh, I, I started off the episode saying, let's friggin' go. The Jets, after you know a lot of radio silence, but rumors that the Jets were shopping and looking for not only a winger, but a defender, the Jets have swung big. And guess what? They swung big and basically paid pocket lint for it, right? The acquisitions of Tyler Toffoli and Colin Miller cost Winnipeg almost nothing. And the best part about it is not only did they retain uh, or they had salary retained on Tyler Toffoli's contract, but they didn't even have to give up Montreal's second round pick. So the full trade return is actually pretty modest, right? It's like um, a second round pick from next season and a uh, third round pick from this year, which for the Jets is pretty friggin' fantastic. I feel like you really couldn't do much better than this. Uh, given what Toffoli is, right? You're, you're talking about a top six goal scorer, somebody who immediately slides into Winnipeg's most likely second line and who brings a ton of creativity, skill, and a shoot first mentality. This is exactly what the Jets needed. He is an awesome player. I've watched uh, Toffoli for many years. Um, and honestly, when it comes to like Kings players that I really like watching, and that I would have loved to have seen in a Jets uniform. Kind of feels like we're getting wish fulfillment now because not only do we have um, Ayafalo and Velarde, but now we have to Foley to, I don't know, we're suddenly becoming LA, I guess, of Manitoba. Who knows? Uh, just without the Dubois, right? But what a stunning trade. And then apparently in the process of, uh, you know, finishing that trade out, the Jets then went back to the same well in New Jersey <clears throat> and offered it, what it sounds like a 2026 fourth rounder for Colin Miller, who at this stage of his career, he's on the wrong side of 30. But what you're looking for is a guy who's going to be a solid third pairing right handed D who could be a good puck mover, somebody who might have a little bit of a, a decent shot and who can perhaps give Sandberg a more mobile back end pairing partner, which it seems like Miller should do that, right? Again, he's not going to be like a top-end acquisition. You know, there was no uh, Jakob Chikrin like we were all kind of hoping for. But you know what? Given what the Jets paid, which is basically, like I said, pocket lint for two really good playoff rentals, you really can't complain. These, these are the exact kinds of players that we were asking for. And honestly, I wasn't sure if they were going to be able to swing those deals, but they got them through. And I, I think for what the Jets honestly need these are about as close to ideal a fit as you could ask for right obviously there was a best case scenario and the jets didn't quite hit that you know they didn't get buchnevich they didn't get chikrin and that's okay i think the biggest thing is knowing your limits knowing what you're willing to spend and given what the jets were looking at for options out there i think they picked up two of the better rentals amidst the whole market and given what they paid which like i said is basically nothing you could argue that the jets uh, just got basically uh, free stuff from New Jersey, right? Those picks, they don't care about. I mean, like the second rounder next year, it's not going to be an insignificant pick. Uh, but you know what? Who cares, right? The Jets already have a fantastic prospect pool. They know that their timeline to go all in is right now. And they didn't even have to give up some of their best trade assets, including that top Montreal pick in the second round this year. So overall... <clears throat> If I'm going to grade Chevy's uh, trade deadline, right, looking all the way back to Sean Monaghan till now, this is like an A++, maybe even an S tier uh, trade deadline. And I don't, you know, hand that out lightly. I think the front office has done a brilliant job. 
I think given the market conditions and what was available, they made the most of it and they got some really fantastic players. Like I said, they probably could have pushed the limit and maybe maybe gotten you know a slightly higher end player at each position, but I mean, given what they paid, right, you really can't complain. Monahan has looked like a great fit, cost a first rounder and a conditional fourth. Uh, Toffoli very likely to be a great scorer, both at even strength and on the power play. Again, a fantastic fit and exactly what the Jets were looking for. He's not the like most fleet of foot, but I think that's actually to Winnipeg's advantage because the Jets don't tend to rely on speed. You know, there's a lot more patient buildup, offensive zone buildup, but Toffoli is actually still very good in transition and zone entries. So that's fantastic news. I'm really excited about him. Miller might be the more interesting one just because it's not clear what his role is going to be immediately. I think DeMello and, and Pionk probably supersede him on the right side, but I would suspect that Miller will replace Schmidt, right? You get Sandberg and Schmidt together, or Sandberg and Miller together. That should be a really good number three pairing, and one that might, you might actually be able to give more responsibility to over the typical third pairing. So Overall, if I'm looking at this trade deadline, the Jets smashed it out of the park. And if I'm the New Jersey Devils, I'm probably blocking Chevy's number going forward. Same with uh, Rob Blake from L.A. Uh, you know, Winnipeg has honestly done nothing but make really good trades the last uh, year or so. And it's really paid off with a team that went from looking like, you know, it was closer to a rebuild to now suddenly being on the precipice of, of one of the top teams in the NHL. And make no mistake, the additions of Toffoli and Miller really do put this team in that upper echelon. Are there weaknesses and things that the Jets are going to struggle with? Absolutely. But I do think Winnipeg just went a huge ways towards solving some of their biggest problems. So overall, I'm thrilled. I think you should be too. Uh, if Again, like I said, if you're trying to assign a rating for this trade deadline, I really got to say the Jets kind of hit it out of the park. I think they got three great players. The Monahan deal has looked even better than you'd expect. Um, Toffoli should slide in seamlessly. Miller should be a really nice stabilizing third pairing D. I, I just can't really see anything that I dislike here. And you know what the best part about all of this is? They did not give up any of their top rated prospects. We've still got Barlow, McCrory, Lambert, Salomonson, uh, Shiverkov. I mean, none of these top players that are likely to feature in Winnipeg's future core over the next few years got traded. So overall, given what the Jets just upgraded at, you know, with and, and what they, they acquired, I mean, <laughs> you really can't be upset. This is a fantastic trade deadline, probably one of the best the Jets have had. I would compare it to like last year's deal where they got Nino and Nemesnikov, very similar style. Um, perhaps even more savings in terms of trade assets because they moved the pick to next year, which is fantastic. And so, you know what? I'm thrilled. I think you should be too, but give me your trade deadline ratings below. Are you happy with the return? What do you think the Jets have done right? What would you have done differently? Let me know in the comments and maybe I'll address that on a future episode. But overall, if you really rate anything below a like a B or a B plus, I'm going to have to ask you if you're really thinking about it carefully. Because I got to say, Overall, trade deadline, I'm in a good mood. I think you should be too. Let's see how the rest of the day unfolds because they've still got a game against the Seattle Kraken. I'm going to guess the boys are going to come out really jumping and looking feisty because uh, all of this news has to be fantastic for the room. It's what the players have been asking for. It's what we've been asking for. And now everyone walks away happy. So a lot of fun stuff. Uh, but of course, with the addition of Toffoli and, and Miller, there's a bit of a question about how the Jets might rearrange their lines. And I'll give you what I think they might do and what I think they should do, you know, factoring in some of Bones' preferences. We'll get into that in just a moment. Before we get too far ahead of ourselves, though, I did want to shout out one of our friends and partners at Factor Meals. Eating better is easy with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to go in just two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. They also have 60 add-ons available to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day long. For those of you who have a very on-the-go lifestyle, Factor Meals is super convenient. They want to make things fast, efficient, and, you know, they want to take out all of the stress and mess from prep. And then, of course, you know, you don't have to worry about cleaning up. All you have to do is just shove it in for two minutes. You're good to go. You get a restaurant-quality meal that, again, is dietitian approved and chef-crafted with tons of great options. They also offer 
plenty of breakfast choices, midday bites, and so much more to give you ultimate flexibility with your daily eating. So if you're ready to get started, really couldn't be easier. They've done the math and Factor really is less expensive than doing takeout and stuff. So just head on over to factormeals.com slash lockdown NHL 50 and be sure to use promo code lockdown NHL 50 to get 50% off your order. That's code lockdown NHL 50 at factormeals.com slash lockdown NHL 50 to get 50% off. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every day, thank you so much for rejoining us on today's episode as we are going through all of the takeaways from a very exciting trade deadline day. The Jets have, uh, in my opinion, smashed it out of the park. They, they got the assignment, they understood it, and not only did they understand it, they uh, submitted an A++ report. And uh, I got to say, in terms of what I was expecting and what the Jets pulled off, I'm pretty happy. Was it like the best, best, best ever case scenario? No, but it didn't have to be, right? It, it just had to be really friggin' good. And I think for all of that, the Jets came away huge, huge winners. Now, in terms of uh, what the Jets might rearrange their lines to look like, I've got a couple of ideas. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But before we go too much further, I did want to let you know something really cool the Locked On Network has done. We have launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And we're now also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with our local experts and our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the Free Fryer TV channels app and YouTube. Now, circling back to the Jets, obviously Winnipeg has uh, now added a, a pretty pretty fantastic top six goal scoring forward, somebody who um, immediately will improve Winnipeg's offensive output and shooting ability and especially their offensive uh, creation. So, for Winnipeg, you know, this is going to lead to a couple of interesting decisions, right? I, I think for me, the top six really should have some rearrangement, but I know that given how the Jets have been coached recently, we're going to see Connor, Shifley, and Velarde on the first line. I think the second line, we might see Ehlers, Monahan, and Toffoli. I think that line is going to cook. Uh, I just have the sneaking suspicion, you know, that that finisher that the uh, pairing of Ehlers and Monahan has really needed you're getting that, and then some with Toffoli. He's super creative in space. He's going to be a threat um, along the half walls and attacking the slot area. He's got a very great shot, a, you know, a deceptive little release and great passing and vision. Super smart player. He has to be because he's not the fastest. He's not the kind of guy who just blows by defenders. You're getting a more cerebral attacker, and I think that's going to play in really nicely with the way that Ehlers and Monahan have been working well together. So, I'm excited to see that combo. Uh, the third line, you'd probably see the same as uh, 62, 17, and 22. I think that's going to remain a pretty routine fixture. Fourth line, uh, you might have some interesting choices. I still think you'll see like 91, 7, and maybe 9. I, I think, you know, that that third, like that fourth line essentially gives you another third line, and you could probably roll it pretty consistently. Now, if I had that the choice to, to change a line or two, obviously, you know what I'm going to say. I still think Connor and Velarde really should switch. The only thing with that is if you do say, if you are uh, not Connor and Velarde, Ehlers and Ehlers and Velarde, if you do make that switch though, I kind of wonder how that's going to work out because Velarde, Monahan, and Toffoli would be a pretty heavy, pretty slow line. Maybe that's okay, but I feel like given how explosive Ehlers is, you maybe want to rebalance that. So if I had a choice, right, I'd probably go Ehlers, Shifley, Velarde, Connor, Monahan, and Intifoli. The second line may have some defensive issues, and I do kind of wonder how all of that would work out. Because Toffoli tends to help in transition, even if he's on the slower side, maybe it would relieve some of the pressure on Connor. I feel like when he has to be the primary zone entry specialist, it really doesn't work out that well. I feel like more often than not, he turns over the puck. He struggles to match up against defenders, you know, standing up at the blue line all that kind of stuff, which puts him in a not ideal uh, position. But maybe with Monaghan and Toffoli, it's going to be less of a problem. Kind of hard to say. Uh, I'll put that as kind of like a tentative. You know, instead, maybe it would almost make sense to have Niederreiter there alongside Monaghan and Toffoli. I think that would be a really, really good second line. And you offer some forechecking ability in Niederreiter, who's just also a really smart complementary player. It does ask Monaghan and uh to Foley to drive a bit more. And I think in this case, to Foley would probably be a bit more of the driver, but it'd be an interesting combo, right? 
Then you could have a third line that has Connor, Lowry, and uh, Appleton, which I know is never going to happen. And I know the you know a lot of people are probably cringing, but I think you'd actually find that line really successful. Connor needs somebody who's going to be that aggressive bull that'll drive towards the net, set up some good passes from either the the crease or below the goal line, and that's where I think Lowry would actually really shine. He'll do all the work to, to create space. He'll drive that transition, and Connor just has to be in the right positions to poach. I think that line would absolutely cook. I think you'd find uh, Connor's finishing ability really pays off dividends, and honestly, given how much that line already plays, I feel like it actually wouldn't be that much of a role change. Uh, it just would look like it on paper because it's technically the third line, but we all know that that's more like the second line, sometimes depending on the game, even the first line, but overall, right, I think that would be a, a very tasty combo. I think the fourth line you can pretty much just keep. Obviously, I'd prefer to have Perfetti play with more skill, but I know that that's not really how this team works. So, you know, you can just leave it. I don't really care. Uh, just as long as you make use of that fourth line as more of like a really upgraded fourth and you give it more responsibility and ice time, I think you will profit beautifully. So a lot to like there. On defense, the only thing that I think really changes is just to have Sandberg with, uh, with Miller. I think if you bench Schmidt, it is unfortunate because Schmidt might actually be better defensively than Pionk, uh, and that's probably where I would have gone with a switch there on the second pairing. But given how we know those team coaches, I suspect Miller's just going to be on the third pairing, and that's totally fine. If I were to do it, you know, obviously I'd probably go with Morrissey DeMello, uh, maybe Dylan and Schmidt. Uh, the only thing with Dylan and Schmidt is sometimes they don't have a lot of puck moving ability, and that can be a little bit of a problem. Um, but Sandberg and Miller should be a, a great third pairing that can probably play fringe second pairing minutes. I don't know that you would want to ask a ton of uh, of Miller, but you know, really, you know, sort of relieving some of the pressure on the top four wouldn't be the worst. But uh, overall, right? I think no matter how you arrange these lines, you've at least got a a you know two through four line combo. That should be fantastic. The first line still remains the only thing where I'm a little bit suspicious and have some concerns. But overall, like I said, I think the rest of the lineup should be really strong, and I suspect that they'll be able to control play. We're not going to get a chance to see it until early next week. Toffoli is expected to join the team in Washington, which is totally cool. Uh, I didn't think we'd see him this weekend at all because, like, obviously Winnipeg has to play Seattle tonight and then go to Vancouver tomorrow. So. You know, overall, just expecting him to join uh, early next week. And hopefully he'll get a little, a little bit of practice time, a few minutes to sort of get acquainted. But, you know, from his his little uh, e-interviews and press conferences that he's given since the trade get, went down, I think, you know, his, his media comments seem really positive. He's excited to get started. And so um, I'm excited for Toffoli. I'm excited for Miller, who should be an upgrade for the third pairing. And uh, Monaghan, we already know, has been great. So, it's now just finding some chemistry for the rest of the lineup to keep that hot streak rolling. But let me know how you feel about these lines. Would you make any changes? Drop your suggestions in the comments below or at my social media as NHL Living Loco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. We may have record McCrory coming in here in a couple of weeks, so something to keep an eye out because that could certainly make this team even more interesting and spicy. Now, speaking of interesting and spicy, uh, I wanted to spend some time, just a few minutes, talking about some of the strangest deals that we've seen at this trade deadline because we just had a really weird one with Tomas Hurdle going to the Vegas Golden Knights. And how all of that went down, well, it was uh, it was a little bit of a puzzle. Let's just say that. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Before we go too much further, though, I do want to shout out our friends and partners at Indeed. No matter how the last game went, anytime you take the field, you've got a shot at greatness. And the same can be said when you're an employer looking for all-star employees who can be your MVPs. That's why you should start recruiting with Indeed. If you're hiring, you need Indeed because Indeed is the hiring partner where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Indeed is the only job site where you're guaranteed to find quality applications or you don't pay a dime. They have to be folks that actually meet your must-have job requirements because they know that you don't want to waste time and money. You want to find quality candidates who not only meet your requirements, but also want to work for you. And that's why Indeed offers great tools like instant match, assessments, and virtual interviews. They want to fit to be seamless and as comfortable as possible. 
And of course, as soon as you sponsor a post, you'll get a short list of quality candidates using Instant Match with resumes on Indeed that match your job description. So you can also apply, have them apply immediately, invite them to apply, uh, which is fantastic. It's super, super convenient. And you only pay for the applications that really do meet your requirements. As somebody who was looking for work a while back, I used Indeed and found it was super convenient, very easy to fill out really could not have been a simpler process. So I highly encourage you to give it a look, especially if you're an employer looking for all-star recruits. Start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. Offer is valid through March 31st. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on to claim your $75 credit before March 31st. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions to apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every day, thank you so much for rejoining us on tonight's episode as we are just wrapping up really quickly with some uh, interesting thoughts about strange trades in terms of um, <laughs> stuff I didn't really expect to see at the trade deadline. Obviously, some of these moves are are worth it. Some of them are just kind of bizarre, if I'm being honest. Some of them are very weird gambles that I personally would not have made. One of the weirdest trades, though, has to be this Tomas Hurdle trade. Now, from uh, Vegas's perspective, it makes perfect sense. Tomas Hurdle is a great top six center who signed for a long time and has great finishing and high-end skill. That should pair perfectly with the way that they play very up-tempo, very aggressive, lots of use of space. I think Hurdle will fit in beautifully. The weird part about all of this is what happened on San Jose's side because the Sharks uh, so like they, they are kind of trying to get out of the hurdle contract, but the way that they did it, I just don't fully understand. Right. So they agreed to retain 17% of the contract, which is about a mill a year for the next six years. Not a big deal. Uh, retention, you know, at that level is not exactly crazy. And we, we saw lots of deals this year, uh, retaining tons of salary. So, I mean, it is what it is, right? It's just a bit of an odd one. What's weirder though, is that they got a first round pick and David Edstrom, who's a really good prospect. But then they sent back two third rounders. It's kind of weird to pay the Knights to take on Hurdle, right? Normally, I would say it makes a lot of sense if he's if he's just a cap dump. I feel like Hurdle is a little bit better than that, though, and it feels like maybe the Sharks got taken to the cleaners a little bit on this deal. Now, for what Winnipeg is probably concerned about, you know, Hurdle should immediately upgrade Vegas's forward talent. I think the only thing for them is that he's going to be out at least until. Uh, later in the regular season, which, you know, there's only about 20 games left. So sometime in the next few weeks, he'll be healthy enough to come back. He had knee surgery earlier. So obviously the recovery process is, is a little bit complicated. And I think that's probably one of the biggest red flags is if he comes back and is not a hundred percent, you know, what is he going to really, really be like? And he's not, he's not young. He's around 30, if not 30. And, you know, at this point with how much time he's got left on his deal, you might wonder what sort of level of performance you're going to get out of him. But, you know, we, we've all seen how Vegas operates. They're not afraid to cut bait with players that don't really fit their vision. So if Hurdle doesn't really work out, you can probably guess he'll be gone not too long after that in the next few years. But I, th I think he's probably going to be pretty good for them, so long as he stays healthy. On the other list of really strange trades, we uh, we did see a Kuznetsov trade, which I got to say, I just it completely came out of nowhere. I I really didn't see it coming, and I don't think anyone did, to be honest. It just sort of broke. Uh, Kuznetsov is going to the Carolina Hurricanes for a third rounder from next year, and I think they retained around half of his salary, which is pretty pricey. I think the biggest thing is that this basically just – it's a it's a clean slate for Kuznetsov, who's had a really turbulent last few years. And I guess if you're the Canes – I mean, you might as well swing on a really talented center who's got a great shot and great vision and also has um, pretty elite one-on-one -on -one matchup skill. But I just, of the trades that you could possibly make for a player of that caliber, I don't understand why Kuznetsov was the guy they pursued. It just doesn't really make sense to me. I got to be honest. Uh, it's a weird one. I don't think anyone remotely suspected it would even happen. Uh, all of the Canes insiders and experts just seem as mystified as we are. And yeah, it's just a totally crazy trade, completely out of left field, never saw it coming. And uh, if if they had it to do over again, I sort of wonder if they really would have gone through with it. I mean, it's just, it's a weird one if we're being honest, but hey, 
I mean, if it works out, they look brilliant. But I, I kind of feel like it's not going to be that great. They've already got Gensel, so I don't really know that Kuznetsov adds that much punch up front. But maybe he rekindles some of his uh, Caps glory from like four or five years ago. That's how long it's been since we've really seen Kuznetsov's best. So, e a little bit of a risky one, if I'm being honest. Another strange trade that definitely didn't cost anywhere near as much, but kind of felt like a missed opportunity, is Zucker to uh, the Preds for a sixth rounder. In isolation, I think it's a really cheap deal. You know, the Preds add a quality middle six winger with some good scoring and playmaking ability in Zucker. Again, he doesn't put up like crazy numbers, and I think that's always been why he's consistently traded around. But in terms of a guy who will drive offense and be a nice, uh, you know, tertiary scorer, it's it's a perfectly fine deal. I just, I feel like given where the Preds are, they didn't really need to buy. And if you are going to buy them, what you should do is kind of launder that that salary retention, right? If you only paid a six rounder because you took on Zucker's full salary, could you maybe not have retained salary and parlayed that into like a third round pick or something? I'm not going to say that it's like the most worthwhile investment, but maybe if you're going to spend the money, maybe just do that. I don't know. Zucker kind of improves them, kind of makes them a little bit deeper, but doesn't really move the needle at all. So it's just, I don't know. Nashville seems like it's in a weird spot and, you know, retaining Carrier, I feel like is, is perhaps going to backfire, but they really like him and maybe they'll resign him longer term. Hard to say. All of it is a very strange thing. I think, you know, Trotz wasn't really expecting the Preds to be where they are. But even still, right, I just, I wouldn't have done that. You know, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Same thing with the Devils acquiring Jake Allen for like a conditional third round pick next year. Why would you trade for a goalie now? You just traded away to Foley and Miller, and you've already kind of proven that you're sort of out of the playoff race. So I, again, just a lot of weird like deals these things that are kind of on the small side uh in addition to like the big hurdle mystery i don't know just a lot of a lot of weird tinkering and a lot of deals that don't make a lot of sense maybe there's some context i'm missing but if you're a fan of one of these teams you'd probably be asking yourself what exactly is uh, is going on here matt dumba to the tampa bay lightning for like a fifth rounder or whatever also kind of a weird one i think they also sent a seventh rounder back that way but yeah, I, all I can say is a lot of strange deals, a lot of interesting trades, stuff that I don't know if, if it was really necessary, um, some moves that don't make a lot of sense, which certainly makes the Jets look pretty darn good, even though they were already looking pretty amazing as it was, even uh, without the context of how the rest of the trade deadline has gone. But if I have to take away one thing, smash it for the Jets. I'm excited. I think you should be too. Let me know how you're feeling about all of this in the comments below or at my social media at NHL Living Loco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. For tonight's episode, though, that is going to be all the time that we have. We'll see you back here next week for even more trade analysis and, you know, obviously, hopefully some, some fun takeaways from Vancouver and the Seattle game. That's tonight. But like I said, all the time that we have for today, we'll see you back here next week. As always, have a great one, and go Jets go.